Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and welcome back to all my former fellow codependents. I'm so happy that you uh, found my channel and that you're here to uh, get healed and to be set free. So I just want to get right into the video. Um, so I wasn't sure what I wanted to talk about today but I knew that I wanted to get something out of me and talk about something. And so today we're going to talk about love. All right. And um, if you're a Christian or if you're not a Christian, I think most people know at least two verses in the Bible, <laughs> okay? And probably the first one is Genesis 1-1, which is, um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everybody knows at least that. And everybody knows at least John 3-16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Alright. So. God gave me that scripture. And like I said before. We're talking about love. And I just want to let you know. If you didn't know before. Okay. A narcissist is not in their narcissist state. Capable of loving anyone. I don't care if it's their mother, I don't care if it's their father, I don't care if it's their child, I don't care if it's their dog. They are incapable of truly loving anyone because they are in that state, because they are in that mindset. It cannot be done. It cannot happen, okay? So, here's the thing. You might say, okay, well, why do you say that? Because in the beginning of any narcissist relationship, we all know that the first stage is what? Can you say it? Yes, it's love bombing. That's what they call love bombing. But I mentioned in a previous video that any bomb is designed to destroy you. So it's that's why they call it love bombing, okay? It's a, uh, what do they call that? Those words, it's a... I forgot, not catch 22 but I, it'll come to me it'll come to me but you can't have love and you can't have bomb at the same time i mean is it love or is it bombing it's bombing they're trying to break down some barriers trying to break down some walls trying to break down um your defenses okay so that they can penetrate and get in that's what that is designed to do. It's not designed to help you. It's not designed to bring you to a better state afterwards. There is a plan behind it. So anything that the narcissist does in that love bombing stage, whether it's giving you gifts or giving you compliments, hugs, sexual favors, whatever it might be. It's all done because they are wanting something in return. They're not giving you anything. They're putting something out in the beginning, up front, basically, to get something in return later. Anytime somebody really loves you or wants to give you something or give you uh, or show you love, they do it not because they want something for themselves or they want something in return. They're doing it. Oh, my makeup is running, guys. I'm sorry. This is real. In the streets. Okay. <laughs> They're doing it because they want you to, in some way, shape, or form, to be better. They want you to be happier. They want your mood to change. They want your health to change in a positive direction. That's what real love does for you. It reaches out first and it says, I'm going to give you something because I want your situation to change for the better. So that's the difference between love bombing and someone really loving you. You People who are uh, narcissists, when they love bomb, they're telling you something. They're telling you something because they want you to, to hear something, to believe something that they're saying. But it's not true. It's not real. They want 
they want you to hear and to believe it so that you always have that in mind. Well, they said that they love me. They said that I'm beautiful. They said they could not live without me. They said that they were going to treat me like a queen or he, she said she's going to treat me like a king. Or she said that she thought that I was the best thing ever. Let me tell you something too, because some of that could be true. A lot of what they say, it could be a lot of truth. And somebody said this, I think it was Dr. Faith. And she said, deception is, it was her, <laughs> deception is a lot of truth with a little bit of a lie. So yeah, they might think that you're great, okay? So it's like, yeah, they think you're great and all this kind of stuff, but they miss telling you they think you're great because they think you're the per they're perfect person that they could use to get their needs met. They're not saying that you're great because they want you to, your self-esteem to go through the roof. No, that's not why they're telling you they're, that you're great. They're telling you you're great because they want you to think, oh, this person is wonderful. This person has all these nice things to say about me. They really love me. No, 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 no. 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 And that's not why they're saying it. And so when you have someone who really loves you and they're telling you, I think that you're a great person. They're telling you that because they want you to see yourself differently. They want you to be motivated. They want to encourage you and to help you to increase your self-esteem so that you can do whatever it is that maybe you're afraid to do. <laughs> whatever you're afraid to do. Or whatever you think you're not good enough to be able to do or complete or be successful at. Or even if you do fail, they are there, the person who really loves you, authentically loves you, they're there to say, you know what, I know that this did not work out in the way that you wanted to work out. And you might be feeling like you're a failure or things went wrong. I want to let you know that I think that you're a great person. I think you're smart. I think you're intelligent. I think that you are destined for greatness. And even though it doesn't look like it right now, you still are great and you still have great and wonderful things um, that are going to be or that are going to come to you or you um, still have a great and wonderful purpose that you're going to fulfill so that is the difference and let's go back to John 3 16 the scripture that everybody knows Christians non Christians uh, Muslims, atheists, Confucianisms, this, Buddhists. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying I don't know how to Confucianisms. I don't even know how to say that. I don't know what those people who follow Confucius, what they're called. But anyway, I didn't know that's Buddhist Buddha. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyhow, oh oxymoron. That's what I. That's the word. <laughs> oxymoron that's what love bombing is it's an oxymoron you can't have those two things but anyway getting back to uh love and john three sixteen. so it says that god so loved the world that he gave love gives something it doesn't just say i love you it gives you something and it says also the reason why he gave God so loved the world and he showed his love by giving that he gave he gave something his only begotten son and why here's the reason um so that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life God gave us his son Jesus Christ because he did not want us to perish that is why he gave. He loved, and so he gave, and his reason for giving was not for him. It did not benefit him. Giving his son, his only begotten son, did not benefit God. It benefited us. So when somebody loves you, they're going to give to you. But that gift is not going to benefit that person. It cannot. The gift is going to benefit the recipient, not the giver. So this is a message and this is a word for people who 
are codependents, people who are narcissists, whoever, whatever. If you're coming across this video, you're coming across this video for a reason. If you're giving something to someone, you need to ask yourself, why am I giving it to this person? And as I'm giving this gift, am I expecting something in return for myself? Or am I expecting this gift to be a gift for real for the person I'm giving it to? That's why we give gifts. That's why God gave his only begotten son. And so this is something that you can use to gauge whether or not a person is really trying to help you or if they're really being authentic in what they're saying or what they're doing or whatever it is that they're giving. Because if it's for them and because they're expecting you to do something in return, it's not love. It's not love. But if they're giving it to you because they want you to be better as a result of receiving that gift, then that's real love. So I thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. I hope that this has helped you and encouraged you. And I, I hope that you would also um, somehow share this video with someone who might need to hear it. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to uh, leave them and I will um, definitely uh, respond to you. And I hope that you all have a wonderful and a blessed day. And before I go, I feel like I need to pray. So let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, that you are such a good God. You are such a loving God. I thank you for the gift that you have given your only begotten son, O oh Lord. I thank you, Lord, you have given us that gift for our benefit. And so right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that you touch your people, Lord. Let them be able to have a spirit to discern, a gift to discern when people are for them and really love them and when they really don't. Lord, let them be able to know what real love is. And Father, I just pray and I just thank you that you are, you continue to be good to us and you continue to open up our hearts and continue to open up our understanding. Help us, Lord, guide us so that we will get off of this path of not knowing what to do and get off of the path in which if we are going in the wrong direction, Lord. Keep us and help us. And continue to be patient with us as we go through this journey of healing. And let us always know, Father, that you are near. That you said that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you, Lord, that you are always present. You are always merciful. You are always kind. You are always gracious to us. You are continuing to heal us and to bless us in everything that we do. In every situation that we come across. In every person that we encounter, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you because you are so good. Deliver us from evil, O oh God. Keep us and help us, Lord, to forgive those who have done wrong toward us, Lord God. We just thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. That's it for me. I hope you have a great weekend. And be blessed. Bye.